Uh, welcome to Mission 919, my channel devoted to information and narratives of uh, African achievement, well-being, and prosperity. And today uh, I'm talking about uh, Anna Julia Cooper and her uh, presentation to the Congress of uh, Women's Representatives during the Chicago World Fair in 1893. Um, <clears throat> uh, the fair was... Uh, uh, was uh, to commemorate the uh, 400th anniversary of uh, Columbus's um, arrival in the Americas. And uh, it was also a kind of coming out party for the United States as a rising uh, political, military, and economic and cultural power in the world. And uh, Chicago was chosen over stiff competition from other cities such as New York and St. Louis. And uh, the fair lasted for six months and had a over 27 million visitors during that time. So it was a tremendous uh, success. Now, there were relatively few uh, African-Americans um, represented during the World's Fair. Uh, Anna Julia Cooper's uh, presentation here is being, being one of, the, one, of um, you know, one of the events that featured uh, an African-American. And um, so her, her, um, her talk, uh, um, started out um, being very candid and uh, upfront about um, um, the position of uh, African-American women during slavery, being subjected to um, essentially uh, 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 endemic uh, sexual assault. And, um, you know, it's very interesting um, and poignant because uh, Anna Julia Cooper herself was the product of uh, such a sexual assault. Her mother was an enslaved uh, African woman, or a woman of African descent, and her father was um, um, her mother's uh, quote-unquote owner. Um, so when she uh, addresses this topic, it's uh, even though it's in a very you know sort of uh, you know, articulate and um, not personal way, it still, uh, I, I would imagine, it took a great deal of uh, you know, courage for her to address that topic. But she's very forthright about it, especially given the time. Um, and so, so I think she, she, she says that because she points, she, she starts there because she wants to really uh, lay out the basis for what she is claiming as uh, some of the achievements of uh, African Americans since um, since emancipation, which was 1863, and since the end of the Civil War was 1865. So we're talking about 30 years and 28 years, respectively. So one generation, and and she goes on to mention that there are now, uh, as of 1893, over 25,000 schools in the South for uh, children, uh, for Black children or African American children, and. Um, that over two million African American children have uh, have been uh, have been taught to read and write um, uh, since uh, since the end of the Civil War. Um, also, that there are over two hundred uh, African American women uh, studying in Europe, and um, others who are who are studying in various colleges in the United States. And she herself was a graduate of Oberlin uh, by the time um, she had by the time she gave the speech in 1893. Now, at the end of the speech, she basically, she's making a call to the white women uh, in, in the audience saying that the cause of women's rights, the, the topic, the, the, the title of the speech is a, a women's cause is one and universal. And so she's saying that the cause of women's rights should be for all women, uh, reaching across uh, the color line and uh, lines of religion, um, and I think by intimation, class as well. Um, and that that is the way that the cause of women's rights should be the cause for all those who are denied uh, their human rights, uh, denied um, the, the, the possibilities of uh, pursuing pursuing their talents, pursuing happiness, and that um, that is what um, should unite women 
uh, in the cause of uh, women's rights and in, and in the cause of all of the, the oppressed. And so she is really, she's in a way, she's laying the groundwork for the whole notions of intersectionality and also for, uh, you know, coalition building um, across racial lines. Now, this was sort of already happening in the South in what's called fusion politics, in which there was a kind of de facto alliance between some uh, whites and the African-American population. But that was coming, kind of coming to an end as the rights of African-Americans were being eroded after Reconstruction was crushed. Um, but it also foreshadows, uh, you know, what what in the 60s and then in, 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 the, in the 80s with Jesse Jackson and Barack Obama is now called the Rainbow Coalition. So uh, Anna Julia Cooper really is kind of foreshadowing, um, you know, lots of intellectual and political trends that would happen um, in the hundred and almost 30 years since she gave that speech. So in the name of the ancestors, in the name of the unborn, we are the same. Ashe, 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 and we'll see you soon.